This video is going to cover some of the most important tips that I have learned over my hundreds of hours already of playing the full Diablo 4 launch. With that being said, let's get into the video and don't forget to subscribe for more of this content. Number one, unlock your horse. The horse gives you massive movement speed bonus in Diablo 4, as well as looking quite good. So the first thing you want to do in the game is push through Act 1, 2, and 3 in order to get to the beginning of Act 4 and unlock your horse. And as we roll into point number 2, we'll make point number 2 significantly faster. Number 2, get your Lilith Altars. The reason you want to get the Altars of Lilith scattered throughout the map is it gives you bonus stats. It will give you strength, intelligence, willpower, and dexterity on every single class. It will also give you renown. Renown is going to be one of the most important things you can get in the game. As we roll into point number three right here is don't forget to get your renown. The renown is going to give you skill points as well as paragon points. There's actually 10 available skill points from the Renown system. So if you're not getting your Altars of Lilith, and if you're not getting your Renown done, then you are not getting these bonuses, which are applied to all of the characters you create. So you can see how all of these points run together. Get your horse, get your Altars, get your Renown. Now you have a nice base in which your character can begin to develop. It's also important because later in the game, when you get to your Paragon boards, some of these Paragon nodes are actually locked out to status requirements. For instance, you need intelligence, dexterity, willpower, or strength. And you can get bonus stats for all your characters from collecting these altars, which again doubles down on the renown. So the, all of these points work very well together. Number four, don't forget to use your potions when you're turning in experience bounties. So if you're doing like a quest or you're about to kill a huge pack of mobs or do a dungeon, you want to use your potion. This will give you 5% increased experience for 30 minutes. You can actually craft these potions. If you talk to an alchemist, not only can you upgrade your potions, but you can go and you can craft elixirs, which will give you these different bonuses. This is going to be very important if you're trying to min-max your experience gains. It's 5% is small, but overall the length of the game, it will be significant. Number five, don't waste your aspects. If you look, aspects have a range in which you can actually see what it rode. You have to enable advanced tooltips in your settings in order to be able to do this. Just go to options, go to gameplay, and you're going to go down to advanced tooltip comparison as well as information. You want this is what this will allow you to do is be able to see what the rows could have been on an item. That way, when you're looking at your legendary aspect, you can see, oh, this is a 29% aspect, which 30 would have been the cap. This is quite good. So instead of using this on an item in the early game as it is consumable, later on you can save it so that when you get ancestral gear like the in-game gear at the end like we have here you can put a perfect roll on a perfect item like i have done on this item right here i have a 260 percent roll this was a max row so i saved it until i got an item that i actually really really enjoyed and i was able to get that 260 percent there maxed out on this two-handed legendary item but if you waste your aspects early while you're constantly upgrading stuff you're only going to be stuck with the power and the the aspects of codex if you actually look at the codex of power it guarantees that you get the minimum row on legendary items when you use the codex of powers so obviously these are good as you're upgrading gear but once you get into the late game you actually want to get better rows off of actually extracting the aspects and saving them for the proper items at the proper time the next tip is when you're gambling your oboes you want to do this on a one-handed weapon the reason is is the other ones for instance gloves have the ability to row other like utility types of aspects where if what you're trying to do is get an offensive mod so you can get like a damage multiplier in order to ramp your damage especially early in the game the mace will be a better option or a one-handed weapon will be a better option as it's going to lock it out to only the ones that fit on the weapons the gloves the amulet and the ring offensive types of primaries if you choose to do a uh you know a cap a tunic or something you could get a defensive type of modifier which might be good in the late game you might want to target that in the later game but when you're trying to get damage based modifiers then you're going to want to roll for weapons. Use the Whispering Tree to get yourself experience as well as items. The Whispering Tree is a way that allows you to either farm in the overworld, do targeted dungeons, etc. in order to gain points which you can use to turn into the Whispering Tree. The great thing about this is every so often you get a guaranteed legendary cache. You can also select which of these items you're trying to target. You can select weapons, you can select amulets for instance. So if there's a piece of your build that you really can't quite get, 
the tree is often a very good opportunity to do this. The Helotides also have great synergy when you're doing your Whispering Tree runs. Not only can you, the Whispering Tree events, be located within Helotides, but it also has bonuses in terms of the materials that will drop. You will need these materials later on in the game in order to ultimately upgrade your gear all the way. So if you see a Helotide that also has the Whispering Tree events in it, it's a very good, very efficient way to farm. The tree favors also can overcap, meaning if you only need one more point, but you acquire three points, your next tree run, you have two additional points in. For that reason, don't be scared to do a dungeon when you only need one more point. As you go into late game, you will be acquiring Nightmare Sigils. These can be used in order to modify the dungeons. When you modify the dungeons, an incredibly important point to remember is that these are consumable. If you use it, it will mark a dungeon on the map and you can go there with the affixes in order to get bonuses. However, if you choose to leave the game thinking, I need to go run to the restroom, I need to go eat, I'll come back and do the Nightmare Sigil afterwards, it does not give you a warning, but when you log back in, that Nightmare sigil will be consumed and that dungeon will be closed. Do not leave or close the game, reinstance any of these types of things. The nightmare sigil needs to be completed once you activate it or else you will actually lose that sigil. So here we are back right in the game and that Nightmare Sigil is in fact gone. In order to even unlock the Nightmare Sigils, you'll need to go to World Tier 3. So this is going to be one of my tips. Try to push through the primary quest and get it done as fast as possible and try to unlock the Capstone Dungeon and get yourself into World Tier 3. The reason this is so important is not only for the Sigils, but you also get the Helltides we've talked about and you get sacred and unique item drops. Unique item drops are massive legendaries that will give you unique aspects only for your class. You need these as they could be quite core to some of the builds out there. Of course, you can push to World Tier 4 in order to get access to Ancestral items and new uniques, which once again are an upgrade in terms of gear. So it goes Normal Legendary, Sacred Legendary, and then Ancestral Legendary as the ultimate types of Legendary gear. You also want to be careful with your gold. Later on in the game, it can be quite expensive if you choose to change a build. There is no armory system in this game where you can save one build and swap to the other for free. So if you have all the way committed to like a wear bear build. If you want to try the werewolf build, it is going to be very expensive for you to undo not only all of your skill tree, but all of your paragon tree nodes as well in order to be able to rebuild both the board and the skill tree. For this reason, multiple builds are a thing, but they're not as much a thing in Diablo 4, so you want to be careful with your resources. These are the tips that I think are crucially important, but there are many more tips that we still need to cover. In order to see the next video, which will cover these, hit the subscribe and the bell to be notified of that next video. 